Welcome back to Advent of Code 2023, day 14. I'm actually perfectly on time today, as in the problem is about to release in one minute. So let's see how long I take from the actual moment it starts. I'm not going to speed code it though. Still going to stream, but I mean, I'll try and go at a fast pace. Uh, So, yep, we're just about to begin. Oh, now I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. Timer. Timers always make me nervous. All right. Yeah, the lighting is fine. Hello, Observer Herb. I think this is the only day this month I've actually done it on time. All right, parabolic reflector dish. This reminds me of that XKCD comic with the girlfriend with the loud sex and the parabolic reflector dish. Um, you reach the place where all of the mirrors were pointing. A massive parabolic reflector dish attached to the side of another large mountain. The dish is made up of many small... Oh, we got to click the Wikipedia link. we got to give Wikipedia their, their views. We want, to, we want them to see a, a weird spike right today. Uh, the dish is made up of many small mirrors, but while the mirrors themselves are roughly in the shape of a parabolic reflector dish, each individual mirror seems to be pointing in slightly the wrong direction. If the dish is meant to focus light, all it's doing right now is sending it in a vague direction. Hmm? Also, the music's a bit loud. Um, this system must be what provides the energy for the lava. So the light needs to be focused on the lava for the lava to bubble or whatever if you focus the reflector dish maybe you can go where it's pointing and use the light to fix the lava production upon closer inspection the individual mirrors each appear to be connected by an elaborate system of ropes and pulleys to a large metal platform below the dish the platform is covered in large rocks of various shapes Depending on their position, the weight of the rocks deforms the platform and the shape of the platform controls which ropes move and ultimately the focus of the dish. I'm not following a lot of this. I don't think it'll matter. Um, in short, if you move the rocks, you can focus the dish. Okay. The platform even has a control panel on the side that lets you tilt it in one of four directions. Okay, we've got rounded rocks. will roll when the platform is tilted. Well, the cube-shaped rocks will stay in place. Oh, so it's like those board puzzles. Um... Hello, DIJ. I'm actually on time for once. Um, you know the positions of all the empty spaces and rocks. So if we tilt the lever, we can make all the rocks go north. Oh, they'll go as far as they can go. Okay. You notice that the support beams along the north side of the platform are damaged. You should calculate the total load on the north support beams. The amount of load caused by a single rock is equal to the number of rows from the rock to the south edge of the platform. Okay, so we take this input, we push every circular rock up until it can go up no more, I suppose. How are we going to do that efficiently? I don't think 
we need to be efficient here. We can just physically move them one by one, can't we? It's like... Um, so quadratic time to iterate over all elements here. And then linear time to push it up. Or as far as it will go. So basically cubic time. If that's... Yeah, that's fine. We can do that. As long as it's not a thousand or so. Alright, let's start coding. Um... So, yeah, part one, I think, just brute force. I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think brute force is even the correct term here, just, um, just simulation, step by step, I don't know. Um, so grid equals empty space with open uh, for line in f dot read lines. Uh, grid dot and so we want to make it a list so that it's mutable because uh, we're going to be muting muting it a lot muta mutating it a lot um, okay so we've got the grid um Okay, for i in range, so let's, come on, n equals length of grid, m equals length of grid, zero. All right, so we've got for i in range, n, for j in range, m. So we're going row by row, column by column. If we see a circle, if grid, I J is wait it is a it's, oops cop it's not trying to move it copy it it's a zero isn't it um no it's an O it's a capital O okay um now if we see an O then we want to push it up so. While okay, so we want let's say and then you learn is both capital O's and zeros. I hope not. I don't see any dots in them here. It should just be O's. Um okay, let's say K equals I. While k is greater than zero, or strictly greater than zero, if grid i, so if the, the cell above it equals dot then we want to do the swap simultaneous swap so so we want to make the top one o and the bottom one dot else break out of this loop Okay, so it'll keep going as far as it can. Then, if it's stopped, at that point we can calculate how what the load is. You know, so the total equals zero. Uh, so at this point here, we pushed it as high as it will go, and now we want to see what its load is. So. K 
he tells us where we ended up, right? And I shouldn't be using I, I should be using K. And I should be decreasing K. Maybe it's cleaner to do this. Do 4K in range. So start from I, end on zero, go backwards. Okay, so if grid cell above it, okay. So at this point, K is wherever it ended up. I guess, yeah. So, uh, total plus equal, so it's going to be, what was the load? The load is, Number of rows from the rock to the south edge of the platform. So it's going to be N minus K. Let's check that. So if K was I minus one, the bottom, no, if K was if K was N minus one, the bottom row, then N minus N minus one is one, and that matches what's in this diagram here. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so if this works first time, then we're good, but probably won't. Object of type generic alias. What? Oops, what is that? What is that ugly square bracket doing there? Don't even know what that does. Oh, it, it, it specifies a type. Oh. Yeah, I've just filled the grid with types. All right, 103570. Nope. Okay, let's try the example then. So doing. Oh! No, no, no. I have counted for the hashes. I just didn't check for them, but we don't need to. Just checking for 143. I'm slightly over. All right, let's try printing grid or row in grid print. Um, so we pushed. I mean, that looks pretty good. So there's one trapped at the bottom. Wait, no, there shouldn't be. Where did that one come from? How did this one end up here? Or where did it end up? No, it, this one ended up here. This one. Oh, hang on. Okay, there's we're one off. Um. 
me, of course, we want to stop at this, we want to stop at one. So we say the end point is zero. 132, too small now. That's perfectly correct ending layout. So I've added up the totals wrong. What is the total load on the north support beams? Oh! It's only the ones which are actually press pressing on the... Um, Oh, hang on. It's only the ones which are actually pressing on the top edge. But then I should have got a much higher number. Wait, what? Hang on, let me read this again. Cube-shaped rocks don't contribute to load. So really, it's um, we we, you, we don't care about anything that happens underneath a hash. We don't even need to simulate it. Really, it doesn't matter. But um, we just All right. I'm getting too small an answer, but at the same time, I'm adding too many things in. So what? Why am I? All right. Um, let's think. So if we hit a hash, we might as well destroy it because it's not contributing. So... We push it up until it hits an obstacle. Okay. And then here... If... I don't think K is correct, maybe K. Let's check if K is the right value here. Zero, one, 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 one. We should be seeing lots of zeros. Where are all the zeros? I've only got one zero. I am range M, or J M range M, grid I J zero. I don't think K, uh, the K value here. Oh no, we never let it be zero. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Let's just say, um, Final i equals i. So wherever it is, we keep track of it with final i. K is not actually telling us where it is. It's where we're looking in this in this sequence, but it's not where it's going to end up. So if we do that, then final i equals k minus one. So final i is what we want. Hundred thirty six. Hang on. Oh, no, we do. Okay, fine. So, yeah, that's correct. We do include all the all the rocks in the whole grid. It's just the cubes don't contribute, but the circle ones do. So these do contribute as well. Okay, so that's correct. So Let's try the full answer then. 
1033v3. Correct. The parabolic reflector dish deforms, but not in a way that focuses the beam. To do that, you'll need to move the rocks to the edges of the platform. Fortunately, a button on the side of the control panel labeled Spin Cycle attempts to, to do just that. Each cycle tilts the platform four times so that the rounded rocks roll north, west, south, and east. After each tilt, the rounded rocks roll as far as they can before the platform tilts in the next direction. What? Okay. After one cycle, the platform will have finished rolling the rounded rocks in those four directions in that order. North, south, northwest, south, east. After one cycle, two seconds. To make sure they'll survive for a while, you need to calculate the total load on the north support after... One billion cycles. Definitely not simulate, simulating 1 billion cycles, so um, I'm guessing we want to repeat this until we see a pattern, a repeat of, of a previous pattern. And the moment that happens, we'll know this cycle. Um, Yeah, we need a method which does the tilt. Same as what I've done, but we need to make it generic. Um, and then we need a cycle which computes the load factor. The load factor is still against the north support beams, so it's still the same calculation we did before. Okay. Um, one optimization we can do here. Instead of iterating through the whole grid, all we need to do is keep track of where the actual um, circles are, keep a list of them, and then in instead of iterating through every grid, we, we just go through each known circle one by one for which we have the stored location, and then move that one. And we can do that in the order um, the order based on their location. So that should cut the amount of work down, not by much, by half. It's not a major factor, but it's, I mean, that's, I think we should do it that way. That will make it easier to make it generic for the tilt because then you can all we can go through them in through them in order uh, based on the leftmost, the rightmost, the topmost, bottommost. Yeah. 
so yeah I think this is the way so um, we want a So each rock has a location. So we just store those locations in a, a list, basically. Hang on. So Okay, so we need rocks equals list. Okay. So actually we don't need we don't need a grid at all. All we need is um, a list of rocks, uh, a set of obstacles, we'll just call them cubes. That's it. Because, oh wait, hang on, no, that's not what, that's not it. Rocks would have to be a set as well. Hang on, I need to think, think this through. Okay, rocks can't be lit. We need to quickly be able to look up where rocks are, whether a certain location is a rock. So rocks would be a set. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've got rocks, we've got cubes. That's all you need. Uh, so here, um, so here we just go for I car in. Hang on. I line in numerates f dot read lines or j r in numerate line dot strip. Uh, if r is Hash rocks dot add uh, IJ. So that's the rocks. Elif uh, is O rocks dot uh, wait, cubes rocks dot add. I, J. So that's all the information we need. We don't need to store a grid. Uh, also,
n equals whatever I ended up here. n equals i, m equals Hello, Slinky. M equals J. Suppose we can do that. Will that give us the correct I and J? Sorry. M and M. N and M. Great. Oh yeah, all this stuff makes no sense now. Ninety-nine, That's correct. No, it's not. It should be a hundred. Exactly a hundred. Or I in line. Why the fuck are we using single letter variables for M and N? N, N is the height of this grid, and M is the width. That's just normally what you use for matrices. Um, wait, so for I... Okay, fine, this is plus one. I, I guess um, outside of this for loop, he's just, they're the last I that was used. That makes sense, okay. And, and, and make sure we've got the right values. Okay, so we need, so we've got a set of cubes and we've got a set of rocks. Um. I didn't know you were doing matrix maths and garbage variable names are pet peeve of mine. Um, if I, I mean, yeah, if I were making a piece of software, then certainly I'd call them height and width. But I mean, yeah, when you're doing anything mathematical, you're going to be typing it a million times, so. Um, I do sometimes call them height and width, but I, I anticipate using these often. <laughs> Alright, so, okay, so we've got our grid, you could simulate this in Minecraft probably, because it's like falling, there was a falling sand problem that someone actually did build in Minecraft, it wasn't very accurate though, because Minecraft doesn't do it perfectly, sometimes sand kind of skips a couple of columns or something, it doesn't perfectly kind of do the thing where it, it lands on one and then it goes to the next column, but it could be done. But here we're not really doing falling sand, we're kind of tilting rocks, rocks up, down, left or right, so it's not quite the same thing. Simulate it in Boulder Dash. If, if Boulder Dash had reverse gravity, we have to be able to move boulders left and right and up and down. So it's, it's more like those board games where you tilt the, the board and all the things move to the left or the right and you're trying to get the ball into the hole or something. Labyrinth? Yeah. Um, I mean, lots of these puzzles people do actually solve in Minecraft or Factorio or... I was kid and I was considering trying to solve one in Open T ETD. Oh, the lock on my door just clicked for some reason. Um, that scared me. Um, Open TTD is a train simulation game, which is really good. Um, but I couldn't quite get it to work. Well, I couldn't... I don't think the game gives it gave me enough tools to do what I was trying to do. I was trying to limit the speeds of the boats. Um, okay, so I've got the beginning of this set up. 
Um, we, we need a method to tilt the board now. So the idea is if we tilt north, every circle moves up until it hits an obstacle. Okay. But we need this to be generic, so it can go left, up, right, down. So define tilt. Um, just provide a direction now. So is it a tuple of minus one, zero, one? What? The directions for the tilt? Uh, minus one, zero, one. Not sure what you mean. We, there's the four compass directions, so there should be four different tilts per axis. Uh, yeah, except without the zero, like you only actually, each, each move you tilt fully, so, um, I'm just going to give them as compass directions, uh, and do an if else, there's probably a, be a better ve vector way of doing this, but, um, let's say, define, One axis level and one was tilted. Oh no, it won't be that complex. Yeah. Um, we just each step we tilt it. In fact, it's 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 follows a specific order. It goes north, west, south, east, north, west, south, east a billion times. So we can't do a billion times clearly. We need to spot the pattern and then just repeat the cycles once we find the pattern. Uh, we need to see where the board ends up after a billion tilts. A billion tilts. <laughs> Sounds like quantum stream. Um, let's just do every... So if it's... Um, okay, if direction is... What am I trying to do here? Okay, okay. Let's do ordering. Our boy Quantum became a man recently. So proud of him. Because he beat Doom. <laughs> or because he got married. Actually, no, he didn't beat Doom. Oh, no, well, he did beat Doom in the campaign, but not in the um, Wheel of Struggle. He got, he got, he did pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I know, because he got married. <laughs> um, I might... Okay, let's call this ordering. Find ordering of IJ. So I'm trying to say that if we're tilt, we, this is going to define which rocks we move first. If we're tilting north, we need to move the top rocks first, then the low, then the next level of rocks, and so on, to ensure consistency. Um, so ordering basically just returns a parameter such that it can be minimized and that will guarantee we'll get um, pull out pull out the rocks in the right order so for example so if I'm trying to minimize ordering then if I'm tilting north if direction is north 
then I want to return I. So if I'm minimizing the ordering, then I'm minimizing the I. Okay. Elif direction is south. We inverse that, so return minus I. So I'm always trying to minimize ordering, and ordering will take care of the logic, so... So if I'm going west, we return J, and if I'm going east, we return minus J. So if I have that, then I could say... Or rock in rocks. There's a problem here. I don't want to. I'm going to be modifying rocks during this for loop, but I don't think Python likes me to do that, so I'm going to have to make a copy. That's fine, it's linear time because we're doing linear time anyway. So for rock in, so I'm going to do wait. If I do sorted, let's try this do sorted rocks. E equals lambda Well given position we match we want to minimize the ordering so ordering of pause one so that is the sort comparator, basically. Now, am I allowed to change rocks during the course of this for loop? We'll find out. Otherwise, I'll have to make a, a copy and just use that. Whip out pandas, grab the columns on north, south, tilt, and grab the rows on east, west. Well, I don't have access to the columns and rows. Well, I'm not storing the grid. I'm just trying to save save space here. I'm only storing a list of the rocks. The grid is just conceptual. So all I have is a set of rocks and they each have an IJ value. But to be honest, I don't think the amount of time saved is that bigger deal, so I could have just simulated the whole grid. Because it's like half. It's like, it's only halving the amount of work, but... But we'll see if this helps. Um, so if I do this, then it's going to have to sort according to this ordering. I think this will allow me to modify rocks, I'm not sure. Um, so Given one rock, we now want to see if we can move it. Um, so, I should actually use vectors here. Uh, north, east, south, north, south. So okay, let's let's create a quick vector compass equals it's gonna be nor goes to minus one zero. Oops. South goes to one zero. I mean, if I'm doing this, then why am I even using letters in the first place? 
It's fine, we'll stick with this. Um, if tilting west for each rock, loop from X position negatively until you cross an obstacle or the border. Yes. So for each rock, try to move it l left. So, um, basically, that amounts to checking whether the space to the left of me lies in each of these sets. Yeah, we don't need grid anymore. Get out of the grid. Um, So, so the current position of this rock is rock. Rock itself is its position. Alright, so while recursively take the entire set, check the position to the left. If any of them have an opening, take that set and pass it to the function again with their positions all with one subtracted. them have an opening. Oh, I see. Is it really an optimization though? Like, uh, you're basically doing one iteration for every, every individual rock and every individual move it does. So ultimately the same number of operations does, you just probably use more stack memory. But there might be something there that's smarter, like um, considering I, I, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to go down that path right now, but there may be something that can um, kind of store movements of large items uh, without moving them individually and then later you can kind of use all the all that storage to, to find the position of items I, th that sounds familiar to me something like um something in computational geometry um a way of compressing moves of large data sets but but for the purpose of this problem it's probably uh unnecessary while pause, so we want to say while one of my exes did a thesis on fluid dynamics modeling, she'd figure this out in a heartbeat. But it's not really like fluid dynamics modeling, is it? It's like, um, I, 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 I don't think fluid dynamics modeler would necessarily find this easy or hard. I think it, it's, I don't know, it seems kind of different to me, but I, I am aware that fluid dynamics modelers do stuff like this, like stuff like percolation and 2D grids and 3D grids. In fact, I did a course on that before percolation and it was actually not, it was the study of whether water can get through sponges or not, basically. Um, and it did actually look like this sort of stuff, like using 2D grids to model a sponge and then seeing if water can... Yeah, maybe. Um, Alright, so while... Pause is within bounds, so we want to say while zero is less than or equal to... Uh, 
pause zero is less than n and zero is less than or equal to pause one is less than m. Um, so while it's not out of bounds, we want to see if we can move it. So next space equals so it's going to be compass this is going to be compass zero plus pause zero compass i should have written an addition but probably won't need to do this often So that's the next available, that's the next space we're trying to move into. If next space not in rocks and next space not in cubes, for each row, Iterate through and store the current location of any obstacle you come across. Mm -hmm. Any rock you come across. Uh -huh. Any rock you come across after that until the next obstacle or border gets added to a stack. And that stack gets placed after the current obstacle. You're talking about the doing the tilt. I don't understand that second half of the paragraph. Oh, okay, so you're talking about where we still have the grid. Uh -huh. So if you have, uh, you would store zero Y at the end, your stack would be two for the number of rocks, right? These rocks would be reintroduced at one Y, two Y. Yeah. Um, Wait, so zero Y means... Oh, it's the... Oh, you're using Cartesian coordinates, are you? So Y is the the row. Okay, because uh, I'm using row column coordinates. Um, the end, your stack will be two for the number of rocks, right? These rocks will be reintroduced at one Y, two Y. Uh-huh. Well, it sounds like another way of phrasing it. I, I don't think it, it would necessarily be an optimization, though, um, because you'd still do one operation for each of those. But um, uh, yeah, the optimization is that you only iterate with a row once. Instead of n times for the number of rocks. Well, I'm not doing that anyway. Uh, it's because I'm not, I don't have any rows or columns stored at all. Here, I'm just iterating through the rocks. So, for each rock, I move it the number of spaces it can move. And then move on to the next rock. So, unless 
we were to store sort of gaps, in which case the rock could see ahead of time where to jump to, which is probably an optimization. I can't be bothered to, to deal with that. Uh, then it seems like what I'm doing is the optimal number of moves. It's just moving each rock one by one. But you can check to see if there's an object at X row. Uh-huh. All right, it sounds like another way of doing it, um, which would require the grid again. Um, so in the example I gave, you have to traverse most of that twice for two rocks. In my version, you die to iterate through it once. Okay, yeah, you might be right. Um, that's the sort of optimization I'm not too worried about. I'm mainly interested in the algorithmic or optimization side, because I'm guessing all the all these different versions we're coming up with will, will all work um, within the time. Uh, so yeah, there's probably another way of doing it. I'll just stick with uh, this now. I, I'm hoping I won't need to actually come up with any actual optimizations. I think it's really just a case of being clever about the 1 billion and just repeating this until we see where it ends up. So, um, next space not in rocks, and next space not in cubes. And I want to say... Pause equals next space. Else, break out of this loop. So if we see we can move it, we move it. So we're, we're keeping track of where we want it to end up. And this is naughty. We don't want that. There. We want this here. No, that's fine. No, 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 no. It should be there. That was right. Okay. So, um... Uh, so uh, when this while loop exits, we will have the final resting position of the rock because it will hit either an obstacle or it hits the edge of the map. At that point, we've decided where it's going to go. If pause is not equal to rock, so if we've found a new place for it. You also need to consider other rocks. As obstacles, yes. So I'm checking whether it's going to bump into a rock or a cube. Rocks, movable, cubes, fixed. So if, 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 so if the position is different now, we are going to... Take it out, take the old position out, put the new position in. Now I'm hoping this is allowed because we're sort of iterating over rocks, but I think this creates an iterated copy. I'm still not sure about this. Uh, if in the worst case we can, yeah, you know what? Let's let's be safe. Let's make us a, a list. So we want. List. Hang on. Is this Python three or two? Three. I haven't used two in years. Long time. I think all the competitive sites have pretty much switched to three now. They don't normally don't support two. Well, no, this site supports, this site you're coding on your own computer, so it supports everything in theory. Uh, you just have to give the final answer, not the code. But a lot of sites have kind of removed Python 2 from their engines. Um,
Let's do, just do list. There we go. That means we can now modify rocks. This is not holding a pointer to rocks. It's just created a new copy of rocks. Okay. Guess you're on Windows. I didn't know what pythons were there by default. Yeah, I think nowadays Windows has Python 3 installed by default. Sorted builds a new list. Alright, I'll try with just Sorted. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would just create an iterator into this set, which, uh, which would worry me because I'm modifying this set while... But then if, if it gets modified, it will complain. The compiler normally knows, so we'll see. Okay, so then that should be it. If we do that for each rock, we can test whether this works. Let's see if it compiles at least. Okay, so now we need one more thing. Define. We want to compute the load. Define, get, load. Uh, and this is simple, it's just return sum off. So for each rock, we take the row value and we do n minus that. So we turn n minus i for i, j, n rocks. So now we can run this on part one. We should get the same answer we got before with the more brute forcey method, hopefully. So we want to do one tilt. Tilt. No. Print. Get load. Oh, compass is not, that's not how you use compass. Compass, direction, you need a, a direction. One, oh, three, four, six, two. That doesn't sound right. Close. The answer to part one was 103333. 103462. It's about 100 over. I mean, it's a good sign. So we probably. It'll be nice to print the locations of the rocks now, wouldn't it? Um, we probably should. Okay. Let's create a method for printing the. The visual layout so uh, we want to just make a grid okay grid equals let's say dot or in range M like that for rock for rock in rocks for let's say for I J in rocks Grid R I J equals that's a rock I J in cubes grid I J equals hash or row in grid print join up the row
Pink grid. See what happens after one. Oh, I know what might have happened. I think it's treating this bottom row as it's going. It's rolling off the top of the map and ending up on this bottom row. Am I? While pause. Ah. We don't want that quite while loop like that. Instead, we can check if the next space is in bounds, because the next space will be off the side of the map. It, so, um. We want that. If next space. If not. So if it's gone out of bounds, then break. And then that's just while true. Okay, let's try that now. So they don't all pile up on the... There we go, that's the answer to part one. Correct answer to part one. Alright, so... One tilt. And one get load works correctly. So now we need to do it a billion times. Alright, let me just get a fresh copy. And this is the interesting part, I guess. This is Well, this is the clever part, because we need to work out where it ends up after a billion, so, um, um, I'm assuming we can just, I'll think about it when I think about coffee. When we want to find a repeating pattern, we need to find to hash the entire grid. Um, I mean, we can do that. We're, we're doing we're processing the entire grid every step anyway, so that's not much work. Okay. Like I was thinking, we could shortcut by hashing instead the load value instead of the entire grid but that might not be correct because you could have two grids which have the same load value but are actually different in different grids but if we just hope that never happens but knowing Eric uh, he's probably thrown in some sneaky inputs. Um, hashing the entire grid, that's going to take up a lot of space. Eric is the guy who made this website. He's, um... Didn't put any in any sneaky inputs, sir. Uh. Eric showed up in my chat once, um, so you never know, he might be watching right now. He did show up last year. Um, especially since I'm playing this on time. He normally... So in the US, he has the problems launch at midnight in wherever his time zone is. Because... Um, I was being cheeky, my name is Eric. Oh, is it? Did you ever tell me that before? Okay, well, I didn't know that. Um, no, Eric Wastel is 
is the guy behind this site. Um, but yeah, he launches it at midnight and then he hangs around to make sure the servers are not crashing or anything while people are doing the problems. Because we've now got like 300,000 people doing the problems now. It's grown. When he originally made this site, he was anticipating 50 people. And he was 70 was his like conservative estimate. Um, in 2015 and then it grew to hundreds of thousands so he's now he's running it on an AWS server probably mentioned it in the Minecraft times those were good times <laughs> get my coffee now Those were good times for the online friends, not as much as you know in the world. Well, no, I'm referring to the... Specifically the, uh... The time, the Minecraft time. Which operates on the, in a different universe to the real world. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... It would be cool if Quantum does some sort of... wants to do some sort of, like... I don't know what game, necessarily, not necessarily Minecraft, or something similar, like some sort of co-op... co-op stream. Similar to, like, when we were doing Minecraft, but... more... I mean, it can be campaign-oriented, it can be, like... like... playing the campaign of a game... but... In a, like, um, I don't know, like Borderlands. Someone suggested Borderlands. I think it was Hellmac at one point, um, which supports up to what four people, but that's not many. Well, depends how many people want to play. Some sort of co-op campaign, fight Cade and stuff. Yeah, but um, that's more of a versus thing. I was thinking something which is actually like campaign mode, but. Co-op style. Hello, Tempo Alex. Oh, we got a raid from Tempo Alex. Welcome back, Tempo Alex. I'll go to day 14. Uh, I'm feeling reasonably good about it. I've um, I'm sort of at the stage where I've got a method for processing one tilt of the board. Uh, efficiently, so I'm no longer storing the whole grid. I'm just storing a set of locations for the individual rocks and cubes. So one tilt modifies that set once. Um, now I'm just trying to do the actual part two, so um, I'm about to... My, I mean, I'm guessing if I just run it until I see a pattern, or repeating pattern, if I hash the grids or something, 
then then that then I can extrapolate to a billion. Lazily operated on the whole grid. Yeah, I mean, in terms of it, it, it probably halves the amount of work, but it's not a major algorithmic decrease because um, it seems like seems like roughly half the board is is obstacles. But yeah, it 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 is a, an optimization, um, and it makes it easy to compute the get the load as well. You don't need to iterate all the things; you just add up the the um, n minus i values for all the the, the uh, ij values in your rocks. Um, so yeah, so now I'm about to run this and see what we can do about this. So I don't really want to store these gigantic grids. So I could take like, I don't know, like a, a char hash or something of it and store those. All right, for now, let's just, let's just hash the grids. And if we run out of space, then we can figure out a different strategy. So, um, uh, okay. Let's say boards equals set. So this is going to store all the all the boards we've seen. Every time we tilt, then we put the new board into this set. So it's going to use a lot of space, I guess. But um, so Tempo, Alex, did you just solve the problem yourself? So while so for I I think um all right for no don't use I because I'm using I all the time let's use okay for K in range. All right, we'll write out a billion because we're not we're not expecting to go to a billion, but whatever. off by one problems yeah that, that can come up with this problem easily i think on two occasions i had rocks going off the top of top row and ending up on the bottom row piling up here what am i trying to do at this point hex so i'm i'm just trying to simulate this um tilt sequence so it goes north west south east or something uh I mean, where does it say? North, west, south, east, north, west, south, east, north, west, south, east. So it just does those tilts a billion times. Um, a billion tilts. Um, and we want to know what the load is at the end of those billion cycles. So um, I'm going to just keep doing the tilts until I see a repeating sequence. And then if I know the repeat factor of the sequence, then you should be able to extrapolate to a billion or any large number. I got memory leak from part two, but I did Floyd on a cycle check. Oh, Floyd, is that normally used on graphs? So you, uh, okay, cycle check. Interesting. Okay. Um, so that's just okay. So, do I want to store this? 
to one to Okay, let's make this a dictionary actually. Boards. Tortoise hair and then applying Floyd to solve it. Interesting. Despite writing all the tilts the same way, only the north one would work. I hope I don't have that problem because I've only tested this on north. <laughs> In fact, I probably should just try try now. Um, let's try tilting it south. Just have a look visually. So then, that looks good. Try west. West it crashes. Okay. No, no, it doesn't crash. It, it's, it's, it's stuck in an infinite loop. Well, hmm. Okay. Stop. 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 Um, that's weird, because I, I thought I wrote it in a pretty symmetric way. Maybe you can't modify the list in place then? Maybe I sh yeah. Uh, I did say I'd correct that if something goes wrong. Alright. Let's do this. Put that list there. Try now. Okay, I don't think that was the problem. Um, minus one, zero, zero, minus one. What about east? Don't you need list object? I don't think so. Because... Rocks is holding a bunch of tuples, so list should just make copies of all those tuples. Like that takes a slice of the entire list. Well, I, wait, rocks is a set. You can't take slices of a set. So list list of a set is just creating a creating a, a new list where each element is an arbitrary element of that set in an arbitrary order. Um, this is weird because, okay, there must be something not symmetric about this then because Maybe run the debugger. I never, thought, I never really touched debug. I should, but I always try to debug things with print, print statements. That's just the way I've always done things, <laughs> even when I was on the job, um, working in an office. Like I was often just writing print statement statements, and my colleagues were often pointing out how primitive that is. But it worked, and I, I managed to debug nasty errors while while others were messing around trying to get debuggers to work, so... Let's have a look. Um, but, I mean, the, the problem should be... should be obvious, it, because it should be... there should be something which I've done which is not symmetric. Because this should be perfectly four directional. So, compass. Debug and breakpoints on that, and I had no idea how to use it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's a powerful tool. Um, but, I don't know, I've, I'm just so used to print statements that I have a good sense for where to put them and how to use them, so... 
they often do that. I mean, especially for these mathematical things, I personally I'd start with a smaller data set and debug. Yes, that would be the smart approach. <laughs> I'm not saying this is the smart approach, but given that I have some stuff in my head right now for what the problem could be, it, 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 to some extent it is the smart approach. If my idea, if what I have in my head is not the problem, then then I would resort to start using debuggers and stuff. Um, this line is a bit. Compass direction, compass direction one plus plus one. So if we go out of bounds, so that's N, that's M, so that's fine. If so, next space. I mean, the key is is these two lines really, that line and that line. Next space. Compass direction, west, east, okay, and the ordering, ordering shouldn't cause it to hang, it would just cause things to end up in the wrong place, so I minus I, J minus J. Tilt west. This is very strange. Okay. Um, so the only th the only place it could be stuck in a loop is here then, because this is the wild true loop. Will this always? Okay, so if there's a space to move it, we move it. Otherwise, we break out of the wild true loop. So the only what the only situation we could be stuck in this wild true loop forever is for some reason next space is coming out to be same space or something like that. Alright, let's start printing next space then. Either we hit the edge of the map or we hit an obstacle. And both of those cases cause a break. Well, look at that. Next space. Oh, this is a boolean not takes precedence. It's gonna be it's gonna be like this. If not that and that. It's going if not that and that. There we go. All right, so does it look right? West, yeah, okay. And then finally East. Okay. Um, oops, let's just turn that off. All right, so now we're doing this. All right, so boards for KM range. So I want to say boards. Uh, All 
All right, let's uh, define sort of like a hash method or whatever. We'll just get certificate or something. I don't know. Um, we just want to create a representation of this. So basically just create an immutable signature. Signature, not certificate. We get signature. So basically it's just gonna be all the rocks and all the cubes. No, not the cubes. The cubes are fixed. So just the rocks. So it'll be just tuple. Tuple of rocks, basically. No, it's got to be ordered as well, so that it, it can actually cut, uh, have a collision. Uh, so it's going to be... Alright, I'm going to look. I promised myself I'd go out and watch the Geminid Meteor Shower for a bit. Oh, sounds fun. Um... So we want tuple of sorted rocks. So if there's if the set of rocks is ever the same, that sh signature should be the same. In fact, we don't even need to have this method. We can just say boards of that. No, okay, we'll keep that. Um, equals k if all right and then we want to do um the sequence is going to be north west south east so it's going to be tilt sequence. I think you're allowed to just do K, even if it's a big number. No, you're not. Um, K percent four. All right. And then we want to break out the moment we see a repeat, so... So we want to say... If get sig is already in chords... Just, I don't know, print K and break. Let's just see what happens, and then we'll try and do the arithmetic afterwards. Tilt, break, tilt. Okay, so we just do tilt, 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 and so on. All right. That was quick. So it's it thinks. Wait, what are we printing here? Hang on, this doesn't look right. If get sig in boards are ready, print K, boards, get signals. No, this is completely wrong. Um, okay, so what are we printing? That thing. Pick that out. One. So it's broken immediately, so it's saying get sig. So we. We did, so we put the grid, we're not doing any initial tilts are we, because that would cause a repeat. So, Yeah, 
if get sigin boards print key and break so the f tilt So it should be tilting north. Alright, I don't know. Let's try printing... Oh, what the heck? That was dumb. So it was just getting nuns. 537. Alright. Promising. Now what do we do with that? So we found that it repeats at 537, or at least... Um, we know what do we do with this now? Uh, it's this, it's just arithmetic. We need to say we need to work out what board, what board we'll have. For every n, for every n, where n is greater than five through seven, so it's gonna be, it's gonna go. Ah, uh, let me think. So all these boards before five through seven don't matter because they may be, they may be elements of the sequence we never see again. Actually, no, that's not quite true. Uh, so. Right. If all right, so I I, w I would say we want to count how many times we see get we see the get sig appear in boards. Okay, so the first time it appears, count plus equal one. The second time we also do count plus equal one, but when if count is two, we break. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is because boards is initially filling up filling up with garbage with, with boards that may never ever get seen again. Because it's but then the first time we hit get sig, the the, the repeating one. Um we know from now on it's going to follow a very regular sequence and keep repeating. So at this point, um, I would want to clear boards. So now boards will be fresh. And now we go to the second one and then break. Okay. Actually, no, wait, hang on. This is uh, the wrong way around. We don't want to clear the boards. We want this to happen here. Don't clear the boards. Okay. Like that. So the second time, we now have a perfect sequence in there without any garbage. Uh, let's try running that. Now, what do we do? To extrapolate to a billion, we just need to find out what... What the... Uh, print or dot values. Let's have a look at what these values are. Okay, so it's gonna this goes from five three seven up to six eighty. So five three seven.
So the period is max ball stop values minus min. No wait. Let me see. So the first time get sig appears in boards, we we add one, clear the boards, we then put that one in. Right, and then we do the tilting. The next time that same sig appears, we don't put it in. So the period should be exactly the number of elements in here. Okay, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be, um, it's, it, it's gonna be length of boards values, which is, okay. So that's the period. Um, Uh, let's say start equals min of all stop values. All right, so we start from five through seven and we follow a cycle. We want to find out where we end up with a billion. So a billion minus five three seven. So we want so we want um, the term is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, minus the start, and then we want to divide out by period, and then we and then is it a case of just finding the board for that term? So what's the term? One oh three. So well, we have to add, add back in the start as well. Um six forty. So then do we just find whichever Grid maps to 640. Have I done this arithmetic right? This isn't that hard. It's just confusing the heck out of me, but... 640. So it's going to be... Whatever maps to 640. Alright, fine. Or B in... Boards.keys if odds b equals term um print load factor Get load is gonna take a parameter. Uh, so print get load for that be so that is gonna be a sort of tuple of rocks, which is fine. And then break. It's so easy for us to be off by one here. Nine six eight eight zero. Not correct. Too low. Could be off by one. Let's test on the example. Let's see if we're in the right ballpark for the example. Um, Sixty-five. 
And they said the answer was 64. With one. One. How could that happen? Why would we be one up, one above on the load factor? Should I try minusing one from the term or something? 60, still 65. Plus one. 105, okay. 65. I could assume I, I could just assume that I'm one over, but hang on. Period. It's not this minus one, is it? Um... Each one of these things could be off by one. That doesn't change anything, that's strange. Get load B. We assume we're one off for now, so just subtract one from this. What did they say? We're too high? So it's going to be 79. No, it's, they said we're too low. That's not correct. No, something's... Um, we're close. got the sequence we just need to get the arithmetic right now so um if get sig in boards Sequence should actually include the k percent four value. Yeah, it won't matter. Technically, it should, but I don't think it will because it's always obvious whether you recently tilted to the left or the right or the up down. But to be for it to be a perfect sequence, you do need to include the k minus four value because otherwise you'll be using a different tilt. And you might, it won't technically be a repeating sequence. It could do something else. I don't think that will matter though. We can try. I mean, in that case, you would have to do this and that. Yeah, the boards would need to be Okay, no, that wasn't the problem. Okay. 
Um, All right, so we've got count is two, we break out of that loop. Okay, so we've the first time we've seen a repeat, we put that value in. Um map it to K. Ooh, hang on. Mm, what we want K to be nine 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 nine, not one billion technically. So here we want that minus one. Same value, okay, that's weird. So we're saying when okay is zero, for example, to begin with, we're setting that to mean that is what the board looks like with no tilts and then the next board will have one tilt and so on so we want the value where boards maps to a billion maybe it was right then um Oh man, I'm a bit stuck then. Okay, so let's check one thing. We want to prove that Alright, let's use a parameter for get sig as well. So We want to sh check that all right for x in range start to start plus period plus one print get load of oh. basically I have to do this will be in boards dot keys if board keys equals x. Print get load B and then break. All right, so basically, I'm just proving that 
the get load of start is equal to the get load of start this period plus one. It should be. So this is the sequence. So it's 114, 69, 69, 110. 110, 69, 69, 110, 110, 65, 65, 105, 105, 64, 64. And then it ends up with 114 again. So that is a repeating pattern, it seems. Okay, good. Now 64 is in there. So why are we getting... So that's 38, and that's 65. It's the answer, the correct answer is 64, which is buried in there. So we have the wrong term value here. Oh my god. Sixty-eight, sixty-eight, one, one, four. Wait, when I add one here, why doesn't it? 68, Always finish here. Why is it only printing those? X or B? Oh, oh, of course, because no, 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 that's fine. Um. Yeah, because we're going off the end of the sequence, so it doesn't know what the next terms are. Just need to it's got thirty eight up to sixty five. So we're saying sixty six will be the same as thirty eight. 67 will be the same as 39 and so on. So 1 billion will be the same as whatever, 30. So we need to do 1 billion minus 38. That's the difference. Divide out by the period. Right, that's what we're doing. And back on to the start. And 
and that should give us the term in here we're looking for. Why don't we get... So term is 48. Mm -hmm. All right. Forty-eight, and when we do forty-eight, for some reason we get sixty-five, and not sixty-four. Forty-eight is sixty-five. Sixty-four is there. It's three ahead. Why? One, two, three, that's the correct answer right there. Why aren't I getting it? Maybe let's have a look at the problem again. Oh no! Fuck! Okay. Alright, it's not a big deal. One cycle does northwest, south, east. You want one billion cycles. So you're actually doing four billion, not one billion. If I've understood the problem right now. One full spin cycle means you go north, west, south, east. But I've been coding it as if we're doing one cycle means north and the next cycle is west. This makes it easier actually. Okay, so one cycle. So for k in range, so actually we want... We want this. Tilt n. Okay. Tilt N, tilt west, tilt south, tilt east. All right. Okay. That's a smaller sequence. That's good. And then we want one billion of those. So, hang on, what did I have before? Copy that. That, okay. Put that back in. 64, there we go. All right, try the big example now. Nine seven two four one. This is what happens when you don't pay attention to the words correct. Alright, so I was right on the edge of correctness. It was just one spin cycle is four. So actually, right from the start, the code was actually working. It was just working for one cycle being one tilt. But we don't want one billion tilts. We want one billion cycles of four tilts each. Semantics. That was a pretty good problem. I think this is something... This idea of a cycle comes up very often in these problems, because often it gives you a question like, what is the one billionth or what one, one trillionth iteration of this process? And obviously you can't just simulate all billion or trillion of them. You've got to find the repeating pattern. And my pattern finding code, there's probably much better ways of doing this um, to 
to ensure you don't get one-off errors. Uh, not that I really did, I think this is all correct. But... Um, Uh, yeah, okay. So that took me two hours. It took a long time, actually. Even though I don't think it was as hard as a couple of problems, which I did actually solve quicker. <laughs> um... It was nice to code this. I think I quite like the way I did it because I didn't store the entire grid. I just stored the rock locations because that's all that's the only information you need. You, there's no need to store the empty space. That's just implied. But if I had coded the entire grid, it probably would have been just as fast. And also, the other thing is, see if this sequence was big, this was actually storing all these boards. So literally, I'm, I'm, I'm taking all these board setups and storing each of them in this, in this unlimited sequence here. So that could take up a lot of space if you're into the thousands. Which it could have been. Uh, he could have given an example which... Well, I think it will be pretty soon, given this the, the nature of this process. But if it had gone into the thousands, I'd be storing massive amounts of data. So, get sig could have been a hash. Um, like a SHA hash of the board or something like that. Just turn the board into a string, SHA hash it or something, and then, then you're just storing a small um, sequence. Um, yeah, that could be used to find the, the period quicker. But we're using less storage space. With near zero chance of collisions or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, writing the tilt in a generic way is, is useful as well, because otherwise otherwise you have to write all of this for north and south and west and east. Um, using vectors to make it generic helps a lot. We didn't really need to... Well, using the letter compass does actually kind of help intuitively. Oh yeah, we need part one in there. I can sort that out later. Yeah, but this trick here, that is something I have to remember because it's going to come up time and time again for these problems. Take the billion, so you find the repeat, okay? And when you see the repeat, you take a second repeat. Why? Because the problem is, the first time you see a repeat, the, the terms preceding this repeat may not be the same as what they will come later on. It's only only now can you be sure that in every future repeat you follow the exact same sequence. To begin with, you might have some 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 terms which will never be seen again. So that's why I do this count equals two thing. I want to clear and then I clear the board. So forget everything that happened before. From now on, we found the repeat, and from now on, it's going to follow in a precise sequence, and it's never going to deviate from that right at the start. For example, the starting board. This is the starting board. That will never get seen again because there's no tilt that could result in the board looking like that. Because, for example, this 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 rock here. No tilt could result in that rock being there. It's always going to be pressed against some wall. Right, so that board will never get seen again. So you don't want it in your sequence because that's that's invalid. 
So you start the sequence from when the first repeat is seen, you finish the sequence on the second repeat, and then um, with those two things, you know the period, i.e. how long it takes to get to the next repeat, and you know a starting term, i.e. the first repeat. When you know the period and the start, then basically it's this formula, isn't it? If you want to find a billion, if you want to find a trillion, or a quadrillion, a Google, it wouldn't matter because, well, Python can handle arbitrary large numbers and it doesn't need to simulate that many. So if I wanted to do, say, let's try it. Let's, let's put in lots of zeros, that massive number. Good luck anyone in C++ doing that. Well, you could use long, long or something, I don't know. But, um... It should be fine. 97241. It's the same because that is a multiple of... It's probably a multiple of the period, so it, that, it's just the same as what it would be. Let's just throw in some... Oops, no, no letters. Stop pressing letters. Okay, some arbitrary number like that. 97228. So yeah, no matter how big you make this number, Python can handle any size number. So um, if he had asked for that value, then there we go. Subtract the start, modulo the period, add back in the start. That gives you the amount from the start you need to look in your sequence. Yeah, very useful trick. Necessary trick. I don't I know I don't think there's any other way of doing this. Well any way of doing this that doesn't involve somewhere computing a period and a, a repeating sequence, but uh, we'll see what other people did. Um, wait, so someone did someone mentioned in chat something about Freud cycle detection? I mean I'm guessing under the surface that's all of ends up being the same thing. It, it might be more work than necessary, but if if you're treating your sequence as a graph, then the cycle detection will detect a cycle and yeah, it's probably just a bit more overhead, but at the end of the day it does the same thing. Um that was a fun problem. Let's see what the leaderboard looks like. So day 14. 5 minutes 46 to solve both. What was the top of the... 17 minutes 15 is like the top 100, so like I took 2 hours, so... <laughs> Let's say if I didn't get stuck, then I probably would have done it in about an hour fifteen. Um, if I if my idea if I if I just didn't make any mistakes and just stuck with that idea and let's say an hour if I wasn't talking so much as well, but still nowhere near the top of the hundred. <coughs> um. Private leaderboard. Okay. Today I was actually on time to start, so I was second in terms of completion after Sam. That's cool. Marrow hasn't started yet, it's a bit early. Good. People are doing well, I mean. People are catching up, they're not leaving out any problems. Uh, that, that's good, Umaro is caught up as well. I thought Umaro didn't want to attempt that, that one involving the dynamic programming, but I will ask him about that. I'm curious about how he managed. Um, Captain Kodor? Will be streaming in a couple of a few hours, I guess. He streams a bit later, so I 
that's cool. Right, I'll try... Some days I will try to be on time uh, to start. I like the idea of starting when the problem releases. Uh, we can't we can't really glean much from this right now, but it looks like fifty percent of fifty percent completion. Uh, fifty percent of people have done part two, so that's a low percentage. But it's early days; we don't know yet. People are still working on it. Because if you look at these, it's sort of at some point some of these were half halfway, but now it's caught up. So it's usually more usually more than 70% of people have actually done part two, which is impressive. Uh, because some of these part twos were hard, but people are really persevering. Um, almost 300,000 people have attempted some parts of part one. Okay, and um, we're more than halfway to Christmas. All right then. Uh, thanks again for the raid, Temple Alex, and this is hang on. Is anyone, uh, I'll close the window now. Hang on. Let me, uh, take a look. See if anyone's streaming app into code. See if anyone's streaming app into code. See if anyone's streaming app into code. Zombie Cho? Golang? See if anyone's streaming app into code. Zombie Cho? Oh, that's my voice. Is anyone doing Python? Python. Alka. Why don't people put the languages in the title? Jake plus EV. Let's have a look at Jake plus. I think he's doing Python. No, what is that? That's TypeScript or something. Python, anyone Python? Oh, Bad Cop. All right, let's have a look at Bad Cop. Bad Cop is doing Bash. Oh, no, he's not lying. Sorry, you can't see this on screen because I've closed the browser already. Alright, let's just go for Zombie Chill then. He seems... he's doing uh, Golang or something. Alright. All right, thanks everyone for watching and I'll be back tomorrow. We'll see if I can start on time again tomorrow. <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.